Hello, I'm Kristen, also known as Vine, here on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, on Ravelry, and pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all the knitting, all the sewing, all the making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And this week, it is yet another dreary, rainy day here in Bushwick, Brooklyn. The rain does not seem to want to go away, and <laughs> so here we are, uh, another another overcast day, and I look like I live in a haunted house, so very apropos, very on brand, uh, so we're gonna roll with it, I think. Um, yes, we have the candles, the ambiance happening in the background, so this is, this is working out perfectly in my favor, I think. <laughs> So anyway, uh, so happy to have you back. Uh, I think this is going to be a rather short episode because I, I don't have too much to talk about, um, but it should be fun nevertheless. I do have some, I do have a finished object to share with you. I do have some knitting in progress. I do have some sewing. We'll see where it goes. But anyway, uh, a couple of announcements before I get into all that fun stuff. We have our practical uh, make-along that's happening. So that is, uh, that's been a six month long make-along where we all uh, make whatever is going to go into our wardrobe, something that we're gonna wanna gravitate towards, something that's gonna go with everything that we wear on a regular basis. Uh, and that is coming to a close March 1st. So you still have plenty of time. It's a very relaxed make-along. You can knit, you can sew, you can weave, you can crochet, whatever you fancy, uh, hop on board and do check out the uh, the Vull and Vine Ravelry group, uh, the thread in there, if you'd like to partake and enter to win a giveaway prize. So yes, there is that. The other huge announcement that I totally forgot to talk about um, last week, because this stuff is never really at the top of my mind, but I just realized that this YouTube channel hit 25k subscribers. I can't even, you guys. You guys are amazing. Whether you've been here since the beginning or a new subscriber, it just means the world that you're here hanging out with me and, and like what I do. So here's, here's to many more uh, years of podcasting, blogging, whatever you wanna call, call, call this. All right, I think that is it for announcements. I am gonna get into what is off my needles. <laughs> What, you have something else off your needles this week, Kristen? Who are you? I don't know, I'm on a roll, it seems. I was actually not expecting to have, again, I, I did not expect to finish these this morning, um, but but here we are, they are done, uh, and they are not blocked, but I finished my socks. I finished knitting yet another pair of socks. Again, my sock knitting mojo is at an all-time low. It's been at an all-time low for the past two two years I want to say. I mean I do still knit socks you know I, I cast on a pair when I know I'm gonna be socializing hanging out with friends the they are just my go-to social knitting project so I cast these on I want to say like a month and a half ago and you know now they're finally done um but yay and I don't know why they are looking incredibly baggy on <laughs> my sock blockers. Again, they have not been blocked, so maybe they do just need to be blocked. But I also think that it's the fabric that these socks knit up as. Um, the yarn is Patton's Croy Socks FX in the Cascade color. Colorway, I don't know what number that is, but um, the tag said Cascade, so we're gonna go with that color. And yeah, I want to say that it's almost like a sport weight yarn. It's very, it's a very thick yarn. It's, it's sock weight yarn. So between like a fingering and sport weight, um, and the fabric that it creates knits up very densely if that, if I can best describe it as that. So that is why I'm guessing that these look kind of stiff and baggy on the sock blockers. Um, but yeah, they're just my normal, uh, 64 stitch cast on one by one rib, uh, plain stockinette, fish lips kiss heel sock, and a grafted toe. It's pretty much my go-to sock knitting pattern to date, so, um, you know, yeah. <sighs> another finished, another finished pair of socks. And I know that I've been teasing uh, doing a sock knitting tutorial. <sighs> I'm going to get to it, I know guys, it's just I have to carve out the time for it. Um, Again, any tutorial video that I put on this channel is done in my free time, so it's what I do for fun. Uh, I am a full-time yarn dyer normally, so you know that's got to take priority. But um, hopefully, one day soon, I will be able to carve out some time and actually record a sock knitting tutorial. Um, 
I know Earth Tones girl, uh, Denise, has a YouTube channel and she actually is um, releasing, I think she's like into the second video, but she actually has a, sock, a no fear sock knitting class that she's offering for free on her YouTube channel. So I will link to that below if you are desperate for a sock knitting tutorial right now. So <laughs> definitely check that out. I love Denise's podcast. Um, she's just a lovely, wonderful human being. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm happy to recommend her, her channel. I think that is all I want to say about these socks. <sighs> of course, I probably should cast on another pair just in cases, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> Other thing that's on my needles uh, that I've been pretty monogamous with uh, since I last recorded, I didn't get too far with it, but it's all I've been working on because I, I just can't put it down. And that is my Isbray, uh, Isbray, Isbray uh, pullover by Skander Knits, my friend Ellie, uh, who is an amazing knitwear designer. If you don't know who she is, get out from under your rock. Uh, check out, she's, she's got some wonderful, beautiful color work patterns available right now, but uh, this one has been on my queue for quite some time, uh, and I'm so excited I finally cast it on. It's a simple um, fingering weight jumper with just this really simple color work detail motif going around the yoke. And yeah, I'm halfway done with the chart, but after that, it's just separate for the sleeves and just knit plain around stockinette for the body. And then I did not swatch uh, I because I, I live on the edge. Uh, I'm using the needle size that the pattern calls for, a US 4 3.5 millimeter needle for the body. Um, I did not go up a needle size for the color work. I just find that my tension doesn't change when I, I knit color work versus stockinette. Um, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. Um, for the neckline, I believe it was a size US 2.5. I'm not sure what that is in millimeters. Um, but anyway, yeah, that it's, we're, we're chugging along. Uh, although I did, I did have to rip back about four rows because I did mess something up. So that wasn't too terrible. Um, you know, I just took my time, popped on a podcast and just took it slowly, went, one by one and picked up each each stitch um but yeah it's i want to say it is a little slow going because the yoke is a uh, you know really big in the round so you know I, it is it is a little bit of a slog but not not as big as this log as my sorrel pullover uh, that i cast on by wool and pine i'm trying to think <laughs> trying to think if there's anything else i want to say about this other than it is i am making progress i'm enjoying it i'm loving it and yeah all good things, all good things about the Isbre. Uh, but getting on to da, 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 my Sorrel pullover that I cast on several weeks ago, haven't made any progress on it. And you know, to be honest guys, I don't think I'm gonna finish it. If I haven't made any progress on it, it's not getting done. Um, it's a beautiful sweater. I'm, you know, I love the yarn. The yarn is my hand dyed yarn, Volenbein Yarns, holding two strands of Ghost Lace and Nouveau together. Um, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I'm just, it's a, it's really a slug. I don't feel motivated to work on it at all. Um, there's nothing wrong with the pattern at all. It's just, I'm not enjoying the process, if that makes sense. So I don't know. It's kind of on a time out at this point. I might return to it but right now I'm just not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. But yeah, the pattern is called Sorrel by Wool and Pine. Uh, and you know, it's a very popular pattern right now. And I'm, I'm just, yeah, I'm not feeling it. So that is the status of that project. Other thing that I completely glazed over last week, I didn't even mention it, was my uh, stone crop pullover. So when I went to Vogue Knitting Live, I purchased yarn to knit the stone crop pullover, a pattern by Andrea Maori, beautiful pattern. Um, I was all excited to cast on, and I did cast on. However, when I brought the yarn home and saw it in daylight, because the lighting at Vogue Knitting Live is not the best. So uh, the yarn, the, the spin cycle yarns that I picked out at Vogue Knitting Live uh, turned out not to really be in my wheelhouse of uh, colorway choices when I brought it home and saw it in daylight. It's beautiful yarn, just not my jam completely. So, um, you know, I, I did panic order some more yarn in a different colorway by spin cycle, but again, their dye lots are, you know, it's, it's kind of like hit or miss when you order 
their yarn online because their dye lots are, you know, vary from batch to batch, completely understandable. So while this is a very beautiful colorway, it's just not what I had in mind to go with uh, the, the Magpie Selkie colorway, which is a dark, very dark uh, chocolate brown, I wanna say. Um, and, you know, many of you were saying, oh, you know, you, you could swatch with it and see how it turns out. I, I just think that this is a little bit too bright for my taste personally. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna be using these with that project. Uh, and I was talking about possibly de-stashing them, but I figured, you know what, since we did reach uh, 25K subscribers, uh, I am gonna be offering one of these skeins as a giveaway, as a thank you to uh, to you lovely viewers uh, for sticking with me, be it since from the beginning, or if you're a new subscriber, uh, I thought it was very fitting uh, to just do a special giveaway as a thank you. So if you would like to win this skein, uh, please leave a comment in the comments below, uh, letting me know uh, using the prompt what you would like to make if you were to win this skein. Um, and again, it's uh, Spin Cycle Yarns and they're dyed in the wool uh, in their Tough Love colorway, very limited batch. So uh, yeah, good luck. And I will use a random, a random comment generator. Uh, there's a website that lets you do that. And I will announce a winner in next week's, um, next week's episode. So yay! I hope you guys are excited for that. Um, and I will save the other skein for another giveaway at a later date. So yeah, that is, that's all the knitting content I have to share with you guys. Um, so I am going to move along to sewing. <laughs> All right, elephant in the room, I am wearing it. <laughs> and this, if you tuned in last week, you probably saw this on uh, Edith Headless, my lovely assistant back here is who's currently wearing something I am currently working on. For now, I am actually wearing a top that I sewed called the Suzanne Top by, or, I'm sorry, Suzanne Shirt by Republique du Chiffon, which is a French independent pattern, sewing pattern company. Uh, and I love their aesthetic so much. Uh, and you know, when I first stumbled on them, they had very limited patterns that were translated into English. Uh, however, recently I noticed that they have been translating a lot more of their patterns into English, which is excellent. Um, but you know, I did challenge myself uh, the first time I tried one of their patterns uh, to, to make to make one of their patterns by using Google Translate and just following the diagrams and. Uh, you know, it, it worked out for the best, thankfully. Um, but this pattern, uh, was a labor of love. I'm not gonna lie. So I did sew this pattern using the English translation. So that were, that was fine. That was perfect. Except, uh, there was one hiccup that I found. It was, it was a very good translation. The, the diagrams were incredibly clear. Uh, however, there was one term, I think, that they, that got lost in translation a bit when they said, uh, make a pleat. Uh, you know, in English terms, how I trans how I perceive the word pleat is a type of, you know, you have a dart, you have a pleat, and then, you know, anyway, I figured out that what they really meant was just to make a fold, fold inward, <laughs> like about like a quarter of an inch or what have you, um, not make a pleat a quarter of an inch inward, if that makes any sense. So anyway, that was the only major hiccup I had, but uh, this is the second attempt at making this pattern because the first time uh, after I printed out the pattern, taped everything together, cut out all the pieces uh, and cut out all my fabric, I realized I did not add in the seam allowances. Anyway, if you are into sewing, uh, you're probably familiar, like a lot of a lot of patterns bake their seam allowances into the pattern and you don't have to add them in. Like, you know, a lot of the big five companies, a lot of uh, independent pattern companies usually add about, you know, five eighths of an inch to a quarter of an inch, you know, into the the actual pattern. But there are some pattern companies that don't do that. Um, and Republic du Chiffon is one of those patterns that, uh, pattern companies that tell you to add, that you have to add in the seam allowance. So that was t such a blow <laughs> to me when I realized I had cut out all my fabric pieces and just did not include the seam allowances. So I let that project, I let, I let this project language for a while. And then finally, fast forward a couple months later, some really beautiful fabric came into my life. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, that is gonna be a great Suzanne top. So that fabric is some fabric that I picked up from Affordable Fabrics when I went out there to Connecticut with Gabby, with Tanya and Nina. Um, I picked up this, it was actually a remnant, believe it or not. And I will stand up so you can see. Uh, and I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see it, but it is this, black, I want to say it, it must be polyester, but it has this really beautiful kind of like textured sheen to it. 
Um, it almost reminds me of, if you're familiar with <laughs> Victorian fashions, uh, Victorian morning gowns, they used a lot of a fabric called crepe and it, it's just, yeah, it, it has like this texture to it and I, I will try and pop a photo of it here so you know what I'm talking about, but um, it definitely reminded me of that and I thought it would be absolutely perfect for this top. And I almost panicked because I did not have enough fabric for, uh, of the black fabric for the ruffle. I mean, the original plan was to have a lace yoke and then use all of the rest of the, the black fabric for the ruffle and the body. However, I did not have enough for the ruffle but I think it turned out for the best, the fact that I swapped out the, the black fabric for the lace uh, for, to use for the ruffle. So it worked out really well. I did not make any alterations. I made the size four, which is I believe one size up from the smallest size. Um, fits great. It's, it's supposed to have a little bit of ease to it. Uh, so yeah, it's not tight. It's not very, it's not incredibly fitted. Um, I actually did learn how to use a, a a new a new trick with my serger. I learned how to make a rolled hem. It's really great for enclosing um, or hemming very delicate fabric, so like lace or crepe or uh, chiffon. It just creates a really nice rolled hem, you know, with minimal work. Because the other way to do it is like a baby narrow rolled hem, which is you know. A headache, I'm not gonna lie. I had to do that on a circle skirt. Not fun. The the surged rolled hem is a breeze. I highly recommend learning how to do it. Um, I will I will endeavor to post a link down below uh, to a tutorial if you want to learn how to do it yourself. But yeah, mind blowing tip. Um, so that worked out really well. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. The button stand that was I I still need to work on my buttonhole making skills. <sighs> One day I will get it. I just have to hunker down and watch a, I don't know, like a crafty class or a Skillshare class or something uh, just to up my game when it comes to buttonholes because I, I need work. But anyway, it's black fabric. It hides my, my sins very well. <laughs> um, and I used some just rounded uh, little buttons. I don't know, what, whatever you want to call these buttons. I don't know. Um, but yeah, they're, they're round little dots and I think they just add a very nice Victorian flair to my, my blouse. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else that, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, and again, I still, again, I, I still need work on my button stands, my button holes. I actually did have to put some little snaps inside to correct the alignment of the button stand, if that makes any sense. But it, again, it's a black shirt. You're not gonna really see any of that, but I will, I will stand up again so you can see what it looks like. Uh, from the back. This is what it'll take from the back. Yes. Um, I love this shirt blouse so much. It's been getting so much wear. So that is my Suzanne top. I love it. I highly recommend it. It was super quick to whip up. Um, I did it in an afternoon uh, after, you know, when all was said and done with, you know, printing out the pattern, piecing it together and cutting things out. I, I want to say like the biggest headache was having to add in those seam allowances and that was it, um, you know, and I pretty much just eyeballed it all around. Um, you know, once, if you've been sewing for a while, you kind of have an idea of like what five eighths of an inch is or a quarter of an inch is, and you can just add those in all, you know, just eyeball it for the most part. Um, you know, and occasionally I did use a ruler to check, you know, make sure I was still on point. Uh, but for the most part, yeah, it was, it was fine. Um, and I'm actually wearing it. I love wearing this top with my, um, Edwardian walking skirt. This is the modern Fantel skirt by Screw Patterns. And yeah, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see it, but it has like this really cool like pleat detail in the back. And you know, it's, they have two versions. One is the modern Fantel, which is, which is the one that I'm wearing. It's a knee length. It comes right below my knee. Uh, and then she, uh, she also offers a full length version, which is like the traditional Edwardian walking skirt. Um, and I, such a great pattern. This is easily one of my favorite handmade items in my wardrobe. I wear it a lot when I'm feeling, when I'm feeling very hashtag history bounding. Um, <laughs> I don't, if you guys aren't familiar with that hashtag, um, I believe I saw it on 
well, Kathy Hay or Bernadette Banner. If you follow any sewers that are very into historical recreations or creating modern versions of historical garments, um, they use a hashtag called history bounding, where you're trying to incorporate uh, historical garments into your modern wardrobe. So I, I, I love the idea of that hashtag and it's a really fun one to follow. I don't know if you, if you're into that, definitely check it out. But this is my hashtag history bounding outfit at the moment. And that my friends is all the making content that I have for you this week. So without further ado, I'm going to get into the blather segment of the podcast where I chat about what's happening in my life. Should you care to stick around and just a little housekeeping note. I know every week I usually chat about shop update, uh, giving you a heads up about when my updates are going to be, but I figure that is getting a bit redundant. Um, only because I, I have my shop updates on Friday and I also publish the podcast on Friday. Uh, it just doesn't work out or make sense for me to talk about shop update when this podcast goes out maybe like a couple hours before my update goes live and then um, the majority of viewers don't watch this podcast until the weekend. So um, I think it, I'm just gonna cut the cord on, on the shop update segment on the podcast. I, I hope you guys are okay with that. Um, of course, if you are interested, you can, uh, you know, in my shop updates, which I hope you are, um, you can always go to volenvineyarns.com and click on the newsletter link, uh, enter your info on there. And every week I do send out a newsletter letting you know uh, what colorways and bases to expect in each update. Um, and I'm going to try and figure out uh, a way to work that in into my spiel at the top of the episode so you guys are aware uh, that that is available to you. Um, and I'm really just thinking out loud at this point. But anyway, uh, yeah, so end of announcement. But yes, uh, on, to, on to life stuff. <laughs> Uh, this weekend, tomorrow actually, is Valentine's Day, so happy, happy Valentine's Day to all who celebrate. I will be totally honest, I am not a huge Valentine's Day celebrator, neither is Dennis, but it just so happens to be our date anniversary, so we celebrate it by default. So, <laughs> we are actually going out tonight because if, if you are, I don't know, it, it, it must depend where you live, but um, here in New York City, you know, a lot of restaurants in Manhattan tend to capitalize on holiday, you know, dinners and everything. So Valentine's Day rolls around and they whip out the, the prefix menus where it's like, you know, pay $75 and you get a 10 course meal, which I can't do. I don't know if you've noticed, I'm a tiny person. I don't eat that. I can't fit all that into my person. So I, you know, Dennis and I, you know, neither can Dennis. So it's like, we, we don't like the prefix menu. So we usually celebrate holidays the day before to be the holiday menus, if that makes any sense. So we're going out tonight to one of our favorite restaurants to, you know, have a, have a date night. Uh, so, you know, I get to wear my, my roughly top, my blouse, and I'm very excited about that. So, um, you know, again, happy Valentine's day to those who celebrate. Um, and I'm trying to think what else. A awesome book came into my life uh, this past week, and it, that book is Goth to Gothic. Goth to Gothic, Romantic Era, Fashion, and Its Legacy by Lynn Zacek Bassett. Um, and I purchased this, I believe it is out of print, and I got this on Amazon. It's used, believe it or not, but it seems brand new. I got it for about $40 US. I, you know, I sat on this for a while. I had it on my wish list and, you know, I was like humming and hawing. Do I jump on it? You know, I did see it for sale for about like 30 something dollars. And of course someone snatched it up and then all that was left was like the $200 version. And I was like, hmm, I don't think I need it that badly. Um, and then of course, lo and behold, it popped up again for the amount that I purchased it for. And I was like, I'm jumping on it. I'm getting it because I've been thinking about it. Um, so yeah, I own it now and I have no regrets. I love everything about this. And yeah, I've just been reading through it. It's, it's really, really inspirational. Like they just have, again, it covers, you know, Gothic fashions from Regency, um, all the way through Victorian, through modern, modern times just really beautiful photos. Um, it's so, so, so pretty. Um, yeah, so here's some, some modern takes on Gothic fashion. Um, yeah, it basically encapsulates and talks about the collection over in the, the Wadsworth uh, Anthenium Museum. Uh, and I believe this is out in Connecticut actually. So, you know, Gabby, I don't know if you've checked it out, but you know, if, if, if 
you have, I, I want to check this out um, <laughs> because it looks so amazing. But yeah, it's just, oh, I mean, not really my jam, but if you watch uh, Gentleman Jack, which I still have to watch, uh, but all the fashions, all the fashions from that show are in here as well. Um, yeah, just a lot of, a lot of beautiful inspiration. So I've been, I've been devouring this as of late. I'm trying to think what else. I think that's pretty much all I have to share with you guys this week. Uh, Judgy, I keep forgetting to mention Judgy, our outdoor cat who has adopted us. She just keeps coming back. And now that it's winter, she's been hibernating in her little house that we left out there for her. Um, she does have a boyfriend. <laughs> This is news to me, but suddenly I was I was dying in the dye dungeon and I heard like this meowing, howling, and I was like, holy cow, is that judgy? And I go outside and it was kind of dark out and I see this cat sitting on the, our fence and I was like, judgy, what are you doing? And then as I it got closer, it kind of backed away a little bit and it was huge. It was huge. And I was like, wait, that is not judgy. And I realized it was a different cat. It was a tomcat. Um... Yeah, and I looked at Judgy, I'm like, no, no, this can't happen. We only have vacancy for one cat. Tell your friend she can't stay, he can't stay here. So <laughs> anyway, I'll try and pop some video here, but you know, it's it's pretty hilarious. Um, yeah, so he's he's been making an appearance. We haven't come up with a name for him yet, but he can't he can't stay. I only saw him like two days in a row. He hasn't made an appearance yesterday. He didn't he didn't show up yesterday, so hopefully he's just passing through. <sighs> Anyway, you know, cats, what have you. I think I'm gonna end things there. Thank you as always so much for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please feel free to like and subscribe below. I put out a video for your viewing pleasure every Friday. And that said, happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making, and I will see you next time. Bye. Bella came to say hello. Did you see Judgy this morning? Did you guys hang out? Yeah. He chatted. Indoor cat versus outdoor cat. Yeah, I know. She's so rude. I know. She's eating all your food, right? What's going on? <laughs>